Believe in the power of friendship. Welcome to another video. Today we are testing out budget snake eyes with only three crafted URs. We'll talk about how to build the deck, what URs are in it, closer to the middle. But first, we got to show off some gameplay. All right, now, when you're playing budget, some of the Snake Eyes cards that see less play are going to be more important. And the Divine Temple, usually played at one, we are playing at three. Startling Snare, uh, Startling Stare, sorry, normal card, very easy to get. Usually played at zero, but we are taking advantage of it. Let's just show off how it does. All right, we used our field spell to get the Snake Eyes Ash on the field. Opponent had to normal summon their Ecclesia because uh, they didn't have we didn't have any monsters to let it special summon opponents playing the Migro Moyi is Snake Eyes going to be able to stop the Migro Moyi Sword Souls looks like we got stopped in our tracks all right this was a very important play here Snake Eyes Ash was going to search for our one copy of Poplar we only got one copy it was going to special summon itself and that makes a Startling Stare live when we have at least two levels worth of Snake Eyes on the field Startling Snare can activate, shove a monster into the back row from the graveyard or field in that graveyard mode, very important. Or it can target a trap card, a monster tree as continuous spell and special summon to our field. So very high level of synergy with the deck. Opponent able to stop it with the Ash Blossom though. So we cannot use the Startling Stare, which means we are completely vulnerable to Sword Soul right now. If Sword Soul can OTK us, we are done. But I believe, all right? I believe Sword Soul doesn't have it. It's, you know, sometimes they have it, sometimes they just don't quite have it. We do have the Snake Eyes Ash to block a little bit of damage. Let's see what Sword Soul can do. St activating the Long End. Discarding a Tenyi. Getting the Sinister Sovereign. All right, burn us for 12. And let's just quickly check. All right, if, if they made Baron, would that have been lethal damage? Uh, Baron is going to let them pop and then they have 3000 plus 28 i don't think that's quite lethal not quite lethal so opponent couldn't find a line they did make the sinister sovereign though anytime we activate a card it's going to burn us for 1200 and banish it um but we have a way to play around that and that is the raigeki and you're probably thinking hey wait raigeki is a ur how do you have raigeki in your deck everyone has one copy of raigeki because you get it for free at the beginning of the game so i know you got raigeki don't lie you can't even decraft it so don't don't say oh i, I decrafted my raigeki you can't Sinister Sovereign, gonna banish our Regeki and burn us, but it does not negate. So all those Sword Souls get popped. And what do we do next? Well, we have the second Ash, and you're probably thinking, hey, you got lucky drawing all these Ashes. Opponent, imperming our Snake Eyes Ash. That's not very lucky, but I think we're okay. We're gonna activate our second copy of the Divine Temple. We're gonna get our Snake Eyes Flamberg Dragon into the Spell Trap Zone. We only got one copy of this, which is why we had to put the one in the hand. Opponent, ending the turn. And we may only have three copies of Ash in the deck, but we got lots of spicy ways to get it out. And this Hora Servant is serving as a little bit of a spoiler for later. You'll see. Opponent activating at uh, the maximum C on our Ash effect to summon the Snake Eyes Oak from the deck. They're going to draw a billion cards, but we're going to try and push for a lethal here with the field spell. All our little monsters are getting baboosted. Uh, if we can summon just a little bit more, we're going to get 8,000 damage. Let's search for the Poplar. Poplar summon itself. Let's activate the Poplar Effect. Uh, opponent DD Crow banishing our one Flamberg Dragon. That is our only Flamberg Dragon. So we are uh, not going to have that for the rest of the game. That is all good. Search for the Divine Temple. Normal summon our Horus. Of course, opponent drew into the Nibiru. So they're going to wipe our whole field. But we got the Startling Stare. We're going to activate it while we have two levels worth of Snake Eyes on the field to put this Sinister Sovereign into the back row. Very unfortunate opponent had the nibiru but we're gonna very, get a very thick nibiru token so maybe maybe we'll live nibiru is here if opponent summons a monster we get the sinister sovereign to our side of the field because of the effect of our field spell oh, opponent it's your turn let's see what opponent's gonna do they're gonna go straight to battle clear the token they're gonna do absolutely nothing they don't want us summoning the oak so opponent's scared to summon so there we go drawing our third ash that may be a, bit, a little bit lucky. All right, a little bit lucky. But sometimes you got to get a little bit lucky. And here's the Birch. All right, now, this is another card. All right, very easy to get. Our rarity card. Everyone plays it at one. I've seen it at one. I've seen it at zero in the budget deck. We're playing this at three. 
free special summon when you control a fire monster. We're going to activate our third copy of the field spell. Get that snake eyes oak. We're going to search for the oak with the effect of the ash. Opponent DD crowing our poplar. This is really bad because that was what we targeted to summon. And also, now our only copy of poplar is banished. Does this mean it's game over? Are we Jover now that we have no poplar? I don't think so. I think we still got it. Let's special summon. Summon the heat opponent has in the graveyard an ash blossom and a fire sword soul strategy. So we're going to steal that. Summon the Promethean princess. Activate princess effect. But opponent has a second Nibiru. Nibiruing their Nibiru and our Promethean princess. Going to tribute everything. But now our Promethean princess is in the graveyard. And Promethean princess being in the graveyard is actually a huge deal. Because if opponent summons a monster. They special summon a monster while we have our princess in the graveyard. It's going to special summon itself. And it's going to pop. It's going to pop. All right. And this is our third UR. All right. You've seen them all already. Promethean princess is UR number three. So we have only three. We have one poplar, one's Flamberg, and one Promethean princess. We'll get to the deck list after this game to show off the key budget cards. And then we'll have more games after that. Sinister Sovereign getting popped by the Nibiru opponent. Playing the Emergence, getting the Strategist. She's going to activate the Strategist, but we don't control a Fire Monster, so we can't activate our Princess. Let's summon the Snake Eyes Oak, target our Poplar. That's right. Oak can target monsters that are banished. Poplar being banished, not even a problem. Get back the Poplar. Search for the Sinful Spoil Subversion. Opponent activating a Shuna in the graveyard to summon a Vashuda from the deck that triggers the Princess. Pop the Poplar. Pop the token. Princess is back. Poplar gonna trigger. Set the Snake Eyes Oak in the extra monsters or in the spell trap zone. Opponent summoning the Draco Berserker, but they forgot they don't have the second battle phase. Only usable in TCG second battle phase, but opponent doesn't have it here. So Berserker not doing anything. Uh, opponent is done. We draw DD Crow. We're gonna fire off Sinful Spoil Subversion. Set that Draco Berserker into the back row. Fire off the Princess. Snake Eyes Oak. Gonna get back the Poplar and only one Poplar. And look how devastating it is. Every turn getting resummoned and searching. Floating back to the spell trap zone. We're gonna make that swarm ship. We're gonna flip that Nibiru token into attack mode. Opponent couldn't clear it. And this Nibiru token is so thick that you know they're they're like in massive trouble. Alright, they got we couldn't get a lethal. They got 1,300 uh, life points left. They got a Draco Berserker that is soon going to be our Draco Berserker. Opponent summoning the Micro Moe Yi. That is not going to do anything. And opponent is done. I don't think there was a top deck that could have saved them there. Sword Souls defeated by Budget. Budget Snake Eyes. Only three URs. Let's go over the deck list. All right. Here is the Budget deck list. Let's go through it. Let's go through the rules. And after that, we're going to have more Budget gameplay. If you like the channel, make sure to subscribe because uh, we'll have more quality content in the future. All right. Cyframe Driver. Obviously, we're playing a bunch of hand traps, so you know what we're going to do first? We're going to take a look at just the core, all right? We're going to take a look at just the core. Here's the deck core. We're playing Horus Servant, DD Crow. We got Triple Snake Eyes Ash. We got Triple Snake Eyes Oak. We got the Snake Eyes Birch. We got the Poplar at one. We got our Cataroost. We got our Snake Eyes Flamber's Dragon. We got Triple Wear Arf Thou, which is actually broken in Snake Eyes. I've seen competitive Snake Eyes decks playing this card. All right, if you control a level one, you add a level one monster from your deck to your hand. If you did not normal summon it, at the end of your turn, you take 2,000 damage. Uh, we'll show that off later. But what it means is, if you have any Snake Eye on the field, you can activate it and search for your Ash, uh, your Poplar, sorry. And Poplar is going to special summon itself when it's added to the hand by card effect. So if you summon your Ash and it gets negated, you can activate Where Earth Thou, search your Poplar, and it just summons itself for free. Uh, we also got Small World to search for our Snake Eyes Ash. Uh, we have some pretty good bridges in the deck, including the DD Crow, which is a level one dark. We also got two Sinful Spoil Subversion. We got Triple Divine Temple, and we got the Fire Formation Tanky. Why is Tanky in here, all right? It's because it's actually got quite a lot of synergy with this deck. Always with the Tanky, uh, you're gonna either search Horus's Servant, or if you're going second and you wanna clear things with Azus, you can do Cataroost. This is a level one Beast Warrior Fire. So you activate this, you summon your Horus Servant, and now you have a level one Fire on the field, which means you can activate Where Arf Thou if you have it in the hand, search for your Ash, or if you have a Snake Eyes Birch in the hand, you can activate it, summon itself, and 
because this is a continuous spell on the field, all of your effects, like your Snake Eyes Ash and your Snake Eyes Oak, that activate to send a card, a face-up card from the field to special summon a Snake Eye from the deck, you can send the Fire Formation Tanky from your field to activate that effect. So it is an extra material for the activation of your Snake Eyes cards. So we'll show that off in a little bit. We also got two Starling Snare of the Snake Eye. Now the rest of the deck list, I'll show you the build, the build that I had. The rest of the main deck is filled with interaction. So we have our, uh, you know, going second cards. And I got a lot of those. Uh, I'm going to go over the ones I've used for the deck, the budget deck. But if you're playing it, just use whatever you got. You got your Max Seas, you got your Ash Blossoms. You can play all of those in these slots. Uh, you know, Imperms, all that nonsense. In the extra deck, we got Slacker Magician. Uh, this card, level 1 XZ, basically saves you for a turn. Unaffected by other cards' effects, you can activate Detach 2 materials. It can't be destroyed by battle. You take no battle damage from attacks involving it. So, if you're going first, you can't make a great board. Just, you, su you summon two normal level 1s, you get the King Kuko, and you're going to live, and hopefully do your plays on the following turn. Downer Magician is here to make Zeus, and we also got a bit of a Zodiac package here, also only to make Zeus. Now, I'm kind of cheating, all right? This is a budget deck. I know you all have Zeus, all right? Anyone playing this game, you're going to have Zeus. It goes in almost every deck. It's one of the most played, I think it's the most played monster in the game. Uh, so, although it's technically an additional UR that you have to craft, uh, Zeus is in the deck, uh, and it's still a budget list. If you're mad about that, you can come at me in the comments. All right, we got Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Cerberus. We got the Salad, all right? We got the Salad Heat Leo, the Salad Sunlight Wolf, and you're going to say, wait a minute, these are URs too. Well, these are actually from a structure deck. So, you can pay 500 gems. And you get all the salads that you need for this deck list. All right, completely worth it. Salad's also a pretty solid deck on its own right. So that is my, you know, it's three URs plus a salad structure deck. That's that's the budget list. We got our one Promethean Princess. We got our Amphibious Swarm Ship. We got Excesso Talker. And we got a beautiful salad. Thank you for the salad. The chef has made me a salad. All right, now let's show off the full budget deck list. All right, here's the full budget deck. Like I said, use whatever hand traps you have, but I'm using all the free ones that you get from the bundles. So I got Effect Veiler, I got the Ash Blossom, I got the one Nibiru, I got the one Lightning Storm, the one Triple Tactics Talent, the one Forbidden Droplet, the one Imperm, and we're also running Cyframe Gamma Gear, Cyframe Gamma Gear Package, hugely important. And that's the deck. Let's get on to the games. On to the games. Now, I looked around, tried to see some budget Snake Eyes decks, but nobody's playing budget builds, uh, not in Master Duel anyway, so if you see another budget list and think I'm missing something, you let me know. That's a great example, All right? If opponent used Imperm or Ash Blossom to stop our Ash effect to search the Poplar, we activate Where Art Thou, search the Poplar, and we keep going. We also got the Fire Formation Tanky. Let's keep going, get the Divine Temple. This is going to be, if you're uninterrupted, your first turn play. Just set up as big a board as possible. We're extending with the effect of the Where Art Thou to get the Birch. And we're just going to keep going. Now, usually with Snake Eyes, you're going to want to make the Promethean Princess and then go into the Amblo Whale if you can. So we're going to do that. Activate, summon some Snake Eyes, get another Birch from the, from the deck. Just go as wide as possible. Get our Promethean Princess, use it to summon the Flamberg from the graveyard, and now we can go into the Amblo Whale. We can set the Ash in the Spell Trap Zone to have some recursion on the opponent's turn. And now if opponent summons a monster, they're going to get popped by the Promethean Princess when we want. And we can use our Imperm to negate, and we can just float so many monsters that you know, we're going to be having a great time. If opponent deals with our Amphibious Swarm Ship, it can pop two cards on the field. Um, yeah, so, you know, we're looking pretty hot right here. We got to take 2,000 damage for the Where Arf Thou. I got to be aware of that. We also use Fire Formation Tanky to set up a follow-up turn with Cataroost, which, I, as I already said, can turn into a Zeus. See what the opponent can do here. Advanced Ritual, our opponent's playing Chad Blue Eyes, and you're like, hey, wait, you're just beating up on Blue Eyes. Sometimes you got to teach Blue Eyes a lesson. Opponent, summoning a Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon and go into that Tyrant Dragon and this would actually be lethal if we did not stop him because the Chaos Dragon gonna flip all our monsters to attack mode or defense mode 
probably attack mode, make the attack zero. Um, and then they can attack all our monsters with the Tyrant Dragon, and that is easily lethal damage. So let's get popping. Pop the Tyrant Dragon. They summon a monster, so we're going to activate the effect of our field spell. Summon a monster from the back row. This monster also not targetable, so we can't pop it, can't negate it with the Imperm. We're going to get Sinful Spoils. Opponent hitting the Flamberg Dragon. Flipping our monsters to attack mode. Making their attack zero. Flamberg Dragon going to float. You get back the Snake Eyes. And this is why this deck is so powerful, right? Even playing budget, just having the one Flamberg Dragon, the one Poplar. Every time a monster gets popped, they all float back. Opponent. Getting the egg, getting the solid dragon, negating our Promethean Princess. That is alright. Because it also negates the Promethean Princess effect to make itself stop us from summoning fire monsters. So uh, with Promethean Princess, you can only summon fire monsters. So now that it's negated, we can summon other things. Like a Nightmare Cerberus. Summon that Nightmare Cerberus in the monster zone right here with the link arrows connected so if it pops we can also draw a card we're going to try and pop this solid dragon opponent activating the effect to summon a blast from the hand we can negate with the imperm here but and you know we'll draw an additional card but i'm just going to hold on to this imperm i'm not worried let's let them fizzle our card draw we got lots of stuff going on also opponent triggered our tactics talent summoning another beautiful blue eyes white dragon prismatic with the og art love to see it Let's go in Excess Code, and you're probably thinking, hey, wait a minute, Excess Code's not a budget card. All right, I know you all have Excess Code. If you don't have Excess Code, use another Link 4. You could use Appaloosa. You could use your Underworld Goddess, a Link 5 technically, but lets you steal monsters. All those are great options, but I, most people have Excess Code, so that's what I'm using for the budget list. Again, you can be mad in the comments if you want, but basically any Link 4 in this situation would be fine. Even another Amblo Whale. We're going to get a Yoinkin. Steal the Chaos Dragon. We're going to pop that Blue Eyes, and... Oh, sorry, I, I forgot. They had a Link Karibo. We're going to pop the Link Karibo first. And then we're going to pop the Blue Eyes with the Amblo Whale because a Link 1 left the field. That triggers the Amblo Whale. And now we're going to go into our potential Zeus if opponent has a Karibo or the nonsense to stop us. We get in with the Hammer Kong and then make the Zeus. And opponent is done. Blue Eyes easily defeated. So you don't, you don't got to worry about Blue Eyes. I'll tell you that much. Let's go on to the next game. On to the next game. We got some of our going... Second cards in the hand. And all we got going first is a Snake Eyes Ash. But luckily, we can activate and summon some Snake Eyes from the deck. But opponent, Cyframe Gamma Gear, going to stop us from doing anything. That's going to activate the Triple talent Talents, though. So we're going to activate this. Talent's going to draw. Pot of Greed Mode. Hopefully draw into something useful. Uh, but we got nothing. An opponent draw and locking us. We already used our normal summon. We got no more plays. Let's set an Imperm and pass. Hope we don't get steamrolled by whatever opponent's up to. Opponent with the right. Get that Griffin Rider. Full adventure mode. And this means they're going to have a negate live, so Imperm probably not going to do anything. Opponent. Firing off the Draco back, bouncing our Imperm back to the hand. Summoning a Pirate. And going into a Psychic End Punisher. But this isn't lethal. Opponent's still not lethal with the red beard on field. Banishing our Divine Temple, but boosting the Psychic End Punisher, hitting us for 4,500 and then 2,000. Not lethal from the Plunder Patrol. And not lethal means we can Raigeki. Opponent left their Psychic End Punisher vulnerable. They got 7,000 life points. We got 15. That's uh, going to make Raigeki live. Punisher not protected. Token be gone. And Punisher be gone. Let's summon that Snake Eyes Oak. Get back the Ash opponent. Imperming. But we got the Where Art Thou. Here is the value of the Where Art Thou. Let's show it off right now. We got Ash. We got Negated. Does not matter. Fire off Where Art Thou. Search for the Poplar. And we got a problem. All right. We got a problem. All right. Because Where Art Thou says at the end of your turn, you take 2,000 damage if you didn't normal summon the added monster. We did not normal summon Poplar. We special summoned it to the field. That means at the end of our turn, we're taking 2,000 damage. We got a lethal right now. Otherwise, we're dead. And we got budget cards only. Well, let's get the field spell. Activate the field spell. Set a monster in the back where we get the Flamber's Dragon. Activate the effect of the Oak. It's negated. I knew it was negated. All right, not a misplay. Get back the Ash. Get back the Snake Eyes Oak. Ash gonna add a Birch to the hand. 
Special summon the Hita. Hita. Not even relevant. They got no fires in the graveyard. We just needed to make a link to. And now we're going to the Promethean Princess. Activate the effect of the Poplar in the graveyard. Get the Snake Eyes Oak back into the back row. Fire off the Promethean Princess. Get that Flamber's Dragon. And that is 7,700 damage. No more plays necessary. Get in for lethal damage against Plunder Patrol. Love to see it. Snake Eyes. We would have died if we didn't do it at the end of turn. We were going to we were gonna lethal ourselves. It's beautiful. Let's go on to the next game. On to the next game. We got our one-off copy of Nibiru. Opponent playing the Cash Tiras. Now, you're going to be relying on hand traps in the deck, just like if you're going second. You're going to be using the hand traps, but Sinful Spoil Subversion, also very good going second card, because you can force an opponent's monsters into the back row, or at the very least, make them use a negate to stop the Sinful Spoil Subversion from... Turn their monster continuous spell. Also, with the field spell and the subversion, you can be stealing opponent's monsters. You push them into the back row and then steal them with the temple on their turn if they summon something else. Opponent going on to the typical cash tier of play, uh, which is actually super vulnerable to Nibiru because they did five summons. We're going to let them set a back row, see if they summon anything else. They're trying to pass. We hit them with the Nibiru. Opponent. Got nothing. All right. Beautiful. Opponent has one set back row, they got a Nibiru token. We can easily deal with the token by pushing it into the back row with the subversion, so I'm not worried about that at all. We also got the Ash. We are going to activate. Opponent with the preparation is going to summon a Cash Tira, but I'm not worried about that at all. Opponent, go ahead, summon your Cash Tira. We just push it into the back row, and opponent knows they got nothing. They can't handle the Snake Eyes, and they're out of here. Snake Eyes is going to get you concedes. Even though you're playing budget, they don't know. They don't know how powerful your extra deck is. So sometimes opponent is going to give you some free connection fails. Let's go on to the next game. On to the next game. We got our Fire Formation Tanky. And now you're going to see how great the Tanky is. Activate. Get the Horus' Servant. This is why we're playing it at one. Horus' Servant lets us summon the Birch. And it's a body on field, which we can also use with the Forbidden Droplet. Again, this is one of the bundle cards, so everyone has this, basically. Let's pass the opponent. We got the Veiler. We got the effect of the Snake Eyes Birch, which people don't know what Birch does. Birch can activate. Summon a Snake Eye from the deck during the opponent's turn. Opponent with the Harpy Feather Storm in response to our effect Veiler. That's going to negate all of our monster effects for the rest of the turn which is very sad. So I'm going to just respond with Droplet here and the Birch to, before we get negated for the whole turn. We'll negate this Harpy Lady, make sure it doesn't activate to search, and we'll summon our Snake Eyes from the deck before everything is negated. Feather Storm. Activating. Flamberg Dragon. Negating that. There we go. It's all good. All negated. Opponent forced to go into all Mirage. They got no more plays. Passing the turn. All right. Fire Formation Tanky. Going to let us search for our second target. The Cataroost, which will make us able to go into the Zeus. We're going to Flamber's Dragon. Set our Birch in the back row. Go into Hammer Kong. Go into the Borbo. All of these, you could play Dryden if you have it, but obviously I'm not playing Dryden because we're playing budget. All right. There, there you go. I'm making concessions. We're going to go into the Borbo. That is going to let us attack directly. We're going to crash over this Almirage. And now we can make the Zeus. Level it up. Rank it up into the Zeus. We got four Material Zeus. That's two full field wipes. And the reason we're playing Zeus is because it's so good in this deck. With Flamber's Dragon, it gets sent to the graveyard. It's going to trigger and resummon all your level one fires. So Zeus, Zeusing ourselves, not even that bad. Let's fire off that Snake Eyes Flamberg. Summon the Birch so we can activate it. Opponent with the Harpy Lady again. We're going to fire off that Birch, summon some Snake Eyes from the deck. Opponent knows with the Zeus activations, there's no way they can do anything. It's perfect. It's beautiful. Snake Eyes does it again. Let's go on to the next game. On to the next game. We got the Cypherium Gamma Gear. We got the Poplar in hand. And Poplar in hand is super annoying when you only got one Poplar. Because uh, you need to add it to the hand to special summon itself for free. So Poplar in the hand, a little bit annoying. We got the Divine Temple to get that Flamberge Dragon. Luckily, we got Snake Eyes Birch, which we're going to have a lot of because we got three. So we're always going to have, usually, we're going to draw a lot of these Birches. Special Summoning itself for free. Um, you know, something that uh, people underrate. Just summon that Birch. Go into the Kinkiko Fuchko. And uh, 
we are protected for a whole turn. We got the Snake Eyes Flamber Dragon to get summoned. Uh, we're going to have, once this is activated, two level ones in the graveyard. So we're going to fire off our Flamber Dragon and get him back. We also got the Startling Stare to push something into the back row. And if opponent clears our monsters, we got the Cypher and Gamma Gear. Gamma Gear, a little bit of an annoying card. If you have any other hand traps, they're going to be a lot better. Like if this was an Ash Blossom, I uh, would have been pretty happy to Ash Blossom this Ash here. We're going to fire off. This is probably a mistake. All right, we're going to fire off the Field Spell, bounce the Flamber's Dragon into the extra mo into the main monster zone so that we can activate its effect to send something from the back row into the extra monster zone as a quick effect. Unfortunately, opponent, cross out designating, naming the Field Spell. Now, most of these decks only have one copy of the Field Spell. It's possible opponent has the Field Spell in hand. If they do, then this is going to do nothing. We're running three copies of the Field Spell. Opponent only got one. We're firing off... The King Kiko right now before opponent does something that could bring up a negate although that is probably a mistake because King Kiko is unaffected by other cards effects so there's no reason to worry about negates the only thing that could stop it is a kaiju and now opponent has the Div Incarnate they contribute it because it activated so that was probably a major misplay opponent triggering our poplar or we're triggering our poplar excuse me an opponent call by the grave negating the poplar Negating it for both players. So opponent's poplar also dead. So we'll see what opponent does now. Ash not adding the poplar was an interesting choice. Div Incarnate tributing our unaffected bird. Tributing, getting around unaffected, going to the Link Rebo. They're gonna summon the Diabell Star Black Witch. And we can't activate our Starling Stair because we don't control two levels worth of Snake Eyes. Very sad opponent. Again, in for 2,500, and this is the card, obviously, that was cut, all right? Now, if you have Diabell Star and the Sinful Spoils cards, these are ones you're going to want to play, but as a budget deck list, we cut this entire engine because you don't need it to play Snake Eyes, all right? Strong Snake Eyes doesn't need it. Opponent firing off. The Div Incarnate, we're going to fire off Cyframe Gamma Gear. But opponent is an Ash Blossom, and that does uh, stop the Cyframe Gamma Gear. So, very unfortunate. Also, lets opponent know that they can play around Gamma Gear for the rest of the game. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, Cypher and Gamma Gear, not my favorite hand trap. Definitely, there are better ones you could play. Ash Blossom, Maxi, obviously. Opponent stealing our Birch with the Div Incarnate. We draw into Ash. Pretty solid. Opponent firing off one at Secret Sinful Spoils. They're going to get their search off right now. Getting the... Second copy of Diabell start to the hand. We're going to search for Birch here because our Ash, where is it? Our Ash is gone. It's negated. It was already negated by, it was negated by the finger anyway, so we wouldn't have been able to do second Ash play. In either case, we're going to fire off Startling Snare, push the Div Incarnate to the back row, but opponent Link Karibo tributing the Div Incarnate. That is actually a pretty huge deal. That was a misplay on my part. I should have just targeted the Diabell start, could have stolen that. That would have been much better. Um, yeah, so pretty sad. Let's fire off our field spell. Push our boy into the extra monster zone. Opponent firing off our birch to summon a Flamber's Dragon from the deck. So now they got a Flamber's Dragon. But we can use our Flamber's Dragon to push their Flamber's Dragon into the back row. But instead, I'm going to get a birch. Is that the right play? I don't even know. Let's tribute to get our oak. And we're just going to go as wide as possible. Getting the Poplar, getting the Hita Far Charmer. Hita going to steal opponent's Ash. Again, Poplar's negated. We're going to go into the Promethean Princess. Princess going to get back our Flamber's Dragon. It is once per turn, though. Now, I'm sure there's probably a way to figure out lethal from this position. But unfortunately, if we pop the Flamber's, it's going to float, get back opponent's monsters. So popping the Flamber's, not really a great option here. Let's go into the Amphibious Swarm Ship, and I think we might just have to play through it. Slacker Magician, going to let us make a Zeus at the cost of some of our life points. Just kidding. We'll attack directly with the Slacker Magician. Just kidding again. Opponent gets back to the Diabell Star Black Witch. So we do have to pay some life points in order to get the Zeus activations, but I think it's worth it. We're going to go down to a very low life total. Slacker Magician doesn't get destroyed by battle, and now we can rank up into the Zeus. We got the Downer Magician, we got the Zeus, which means we got another four material Zeus. So we got two full field wipes, triggering our own Flamber's Dragon, uh, and we got the Swarm Ship, and we got Promethean Princess. Opponent does not have their Princess live, 
So I think we're in an advantage position here, but we just got to see opponent. Um, this was this again. All right, it's probably a misplay. Activate the Flamberge, uh, the effect the Ash to trigger the Flamberge to start summoning. Not necessary. Also going to lose out on some Zeus value later on. Opponent is going to battle. And I was worried that they were going to attack over my Oak and kill me. So I did have to activate if they went for that attack. But I probably was better just to Zeus. Uh, since this original Simple Spoils is a normal spell, we would just wipe it with a Zeus before they could respond. So bit of a misplay. All right. But, you know, we're stressed. We're running out of time at this point also. Promethean Princess going to activate, pop the Ash, but opponent... Again with a Link Karibo. Another card that I couldn't craft for the deck because we're playing budget. If you got a Link Karibo, you, you want to play it. You see how powerful the non-budget version of the deck is with the prismatic Link Karibo. Doing so much work. Adding the Poplar to the hand, it is no longer negated. Poplar going to summon itself, search for a copy of the Dramatic Snake Eyes Chase. A card that we are not playing because we can't play any Diabell Star monsters because they're all URs. Opponent going to the Relinquished Anima to try and yoink our Princess. That's not ideal at all. And opponent, and this is, again, major issue. Our Zeus can activate, wipe the Flamber's Dragon and the Relinquished Anima, but opponent's Flamber's Dragon is going to activate, resummon all of their monsters back to the field. So opponent gets to do it all again. Poplar going to try and reset our Flamber's Dragon into the extra monster zone, or into the spell trap zone. Opponent, Dramatic Snake Eyes Chase. Get any Diabell Star there. And opponent. We're going to wipe them again. They got nothing left. Except they still have their normal summon. And they can draw a card with the Sinful Spoils. Opponent. See, showing off the power of the Sinful Spoils engine. But we did survive. We lost all the wipes on our Zeus. But we lived. So we have another shot. Snake Eyes Oak can summon itself. Do our combos. And we should be able to get push for lethal. So we're going to Oak here. Opponent with the Imperm. Imperm going to negate the effect of the Oak. And that is a huge deal. We are running out of things to do. We're going to Small World. Search for our Effect Failure. So we have a negate. We're going to summon Zeus. Uh, switch Zeus to Attack Mode Attack. Attack Opponent. We're not dead yet. We're not dead yet. We're going to fire off Sinful Spoils. Push our Snake Eyes Oak into the, into the Spell Trap Zone. This was a huge mistake. I should never have done this. With the Snake Eyes on the field, our Princess was live to summon and pop their special summon monsters. But I was I was too afraid. I was too afraid they could just summon, normal summon anything and attack over me that I didn't do it. Sinful Spools coming in, getting the Diabell Star Black Witch. They're going to summon the Black Witch. Discarding the Flamberge Dragon that they had the second copy of. That's going to resummon all of their monsters. And there is no way we get through here. They easily wipe our Zeus. And get in with a single effect Veiler that's not going to be enough to stop them. Just showing the difference in power between the budget and non-budget. But we put up a great fight. I think if I played a little bit better, I you know, there was a chance. There was a chance. Let's do one more game. And then we'll wrap things up. On to the next game. See, this is an older one. I was testing out Kaijus as well, which got cut from the main deck. But you can play Kaijus if you want. Opponent Ash Blossoming. Our Snake Eyes Ash. It is going to happen quite often. Unfortunately, we don't have a Where Arf Thou to activate Search for the Poplar. We do have the Field Spell, though. Field Spell get the Poplar. Means we can summon from the deck the Flamber's Dragon. Was that even the right play? We could have got an Oak. Oak could have searched... Uh, Oak could have resummoned the Poplar from the graveyard, activated the Poplar, search for the Snake Eyes Trap card. That probably would have been a better, better line. But we're just going to go for Flamber's Dragon here. Opponent negating it, so we can't use its effect to push something into the back row. Smart, smart play, smart play. We still got the Poplar. We still got the Flamber's Dragon. Opponent, what can you do? They can set a bunch of back row and they're playing Labyrinth. Labyrinth, very frightening. We're going to summon our Poplar here. Trigger Poplar. Get Poplar's effect. Budget Snake Eyes. Showing off the value, right? Because both of our URs are searchable. And our third one's in the extra deck. Having only three. Only a slight, only a slight punishment. This was a misplay. I wanted to make the other one. I wanted to make the one that pops the back row, the bird. But I accidentally summoned the Nightmare Cerberus. Sometimes you just gotta get good. Sometimes you gotta get better. We did trigger our Flamber successfully though. And the Poplar. Opponent with the two back row. 
Flamber's Dragon. Get the Poplar. Get the Ash. That's going to activate the Ash effect. Luckily, we have another way to pop back row. We have the Heat Leo, as well as the one we were trying to summon before, the Nightmare Phoenix. Search for the Birch. Summon our Nightmare Phoenix so we still have a level 1 fire on the field. Discard our useless Cyphering Gamma Gear to pop opponent's back row. Punishment. Gonna punish the Phoenix. But opponent, you only got one back row left. And you sent a uh, Dragon Maid to the graveyard. Alright. Go into the Promethean Princess. Princess gonna resummon from the graveyard something. But opponent Void Trap Hole popping the Princess. Alright. It's all good. It's all good. Get the Starling Snare. We got our Princess in the graveyard. We got our Flamber's Dragon in the back row. Opponent Monster Reborning our Princess to stop Princess from triggering. But they don't know we got the Starling Snare. They don't even know. Triggers the Flamber's Dragon. Summons itself. And now the Starling Snare is live. We let opponent summon an Ash Blossom. That's fine. We're going to fire off this. Get the Princess back. Summon the Princess. An opponent ending the turn. They got no more plays. Beautiful. Princess can summon something from the graveyard. We can go into another Link monster. We got the Flamburst Dragon to push this Ash Blossom into the back row. We also got the Sinful Spools to do the same thing. Opponent getting dominated by the power of Budget. Budget Snake Eyes. Budget Snake Eyes. Still extremely powerful. And when this deck gets hit, will Budget Snake Eyes still be viable? You just have to see. Konami always hits the budget cards first, but right now, completely unhit. So Snake Eyes ravaging, ravaging the Master Duel tier list. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments if I missed any budgety cards or budgety inclusions. Let me know if you try it out. And I'll see you next time. Have a good night.